Hey there, today we'll go over how to set up your own Power World dedicated server for free without using a server hosting service. This is something you can run directly on your main PC or even better, a dedicated secondary PC. Setting up the server is actually quite easy. I've found a program called HeroHost, which is a client that helps you easily configure servers for games like Power World and Valheim and other games. So check the description of this video and download HeroHost to get started. And I do want to put out the disclaimer that I'm not sponsored. I just found this to be the easiest way to host a server. This program is completely free. It sets up all the server files for you and it shows detailed server information. So in my opinion, there's just no reason not to use this. Once you have HeroHost downloaded, extract HeroHost into a folder wherever you'd like the server files to be saved on your computer. For this tutorial, I created a folder on my desktop called HeroHost. Once you open HeroHost, go down to the Create button, select Power World, and then wait for the server files to install and finish. This can take a few minutes depending on the speed of your computer. Once the server files have installed, you now have your server. Now in order for your friends to connect to your server, you're going to need to port forward your internet router or have your friends use a LAN emulator software such as Hamachi. I highly recommend port forwarding just for a better connection and it prevents you from having to install any additional software. If you already know how to port forward, you're just going to port forward the port 8211 for TCP and UDP both. Unfortunately, there is no universal way to port forward your router. Every router is different and certain internet providers may even block this feature from their users. I would suggest locating your router's model number and looking up how to port forward your specific router. While you are port forwarding, I would also suggest setting up a static local IP address for the computer that you're setting the server up on. Because if you don't do this, once the local IP addresses change, normally this is every 14 days or each time you reset your router, you'll notice that you'll have to go back in and change your port forward settings each time this happens. So save yourself some time and also look up how to set up a static IP address. Once you have port forwarded, you will provide your friends with your public IP address. It's important to only give this out to friends you trust and this should not be shared with anyone online. If you want to create a server for anyone to join, I would suggest spending money on a dedicated host server so you're not giving out your public IP address. Also, public IP addresses normally change every 14 days, so you will need to provide the new public IP address to your friends once that changes. Unless you set up a dynamic DNS service, which is out of the scope of this video, but I may create a separate video on that if anyone's interested. And at this point in the video, if you've completed all those steps, you and your friends should be able to join the server. If you have any connection issues at this point, please recheck your port forwarding. Nine times out of 10, any connection issue is going to be because of something wrong with your port forwarding, or maybe your public IP address changed. There are a few different things that could go wrong and prevent your friends from being able to join your server. So once you verify that you and your friends are able to connect to the server, you can then shut down the server, go into the server config settings, and adjust any values that you want to change, including the capture rate, spawn rate, etc. It's fully customizable to however you would like. One tip I would like to give is anytime that you're editing your configuration file, please shut down your server first, because I've noticed that these changes normally do not save if the server is still running, even after restarting. So make sure if you're changing any values here and you want them to stick, go ahead and shut down your server and then edit the configuration files and then start your server back up. What I like about HeroHost is you can also go in and configure some automatic scheduled events such as a server restart, however often you would prefer. You can also back up your server and you can update the server from here. So very easy experience. You don't have to go in and modify files yourself. Everything is connected to this dashboard. You can also see the uptime of the server, how many players are connected at a given time, and the performance of the server. That's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, drop them below and I'll try to help as much as I can. If it's an issue regarding port forwarding, you'll probably get more assistance reaching out to the manufacturer of your router. 
Unfortunately, I won't be able to help much there, but any other questions, I should be able to help in the comments below. As always, it's been Exilent. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.